there, there's actually this is a great talk by uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, uh, uh, who's a, a Mauritanian scholar. He gave a talk at the World Economic Forum, and he was asked about uh, racism and terrorism, all this good stuff, right? One thing he said, he said, Muslims in the West, they kind of have three things that they can choose, right? He said, uh, either they isolate, assimilate, or integrate. And he said, isolation as in they stay away from the community at large and live their own in, in their own little enclave, like a Muslim city within America, right? Mm -hmm. Or they assimilate, meaning they go all the way into their, uh, uh, they, they basically lose their identity, lose their culture, and, and they, they pick up practices that are un-Islamic. Or they integrate. They become part of the salad bowl. You know what I'm saying? Like a salad bowl versus a soup. You don't lose your identity like a salad. You know, the, no. every, every part of it is like it's, different. It's, yeah, it's itself. It didn't it didn't lose its flavor or taste. It didn't become one. Like a soup is one flavor. Like Although, solids and liquids, you mean? That, that would make more sense. Well, s salad versus soup. You know what I'm saying? No, because but, a salad is solid. And yeah, the soup is liquid. Exactly. It all mixes together. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That would, yeah. So they're not losing their cultural identity is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. And that's okay. what he's saying is that that's the sunnah, that what you're supposed to do is you become part of the community but you don't lose your identity. And no one expects you to lose your identity in America. Maybe in France, you can't be something hyphen French. You can't be French American, French African, you, you just French, right? But in America, you can be whatever you want. You can be Hispanic American, you can be Arab American, you can be Indian American. You can be, you can, there, there, there's no one expecting you to give up something of your own to become American because what, is, what does it mean to be American? All it means is that you believe in the ideals of the Constitution, which is, and and the and the amendments is that you know you believe in in freedom. Well, freedom, it's, yeah. Ultimately, freedom! it's freedom. Yeah, exactly. It's freedom of religion, you know, freedom of speech, uh, and 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 all those rights that you have as an American. That's that's exactly what it means to be an American. At the end of the day, uh, you could be whatever else you want. You could be Christian, atheist, Muslim, Jewish. It doesn't even matter who you are or what you believe. All it matters is that you live. And let live. And so you don't have to lose a stem. You don't have to lose your beard if you want to have a beard. No one, no one's asking you to stop. And if you want to wear, like, like you know, some really, really conservative Muslims do, if you want to wear all black and in niqab, no one's stopping you. However, though, let me add a note about that. Mm -hmm. Sheikh bin Bayah is, bro, I'm telling you, you got to look this man up. He was talking, he, he got a bin question. Bayah? Huh? What's his name? Yeah, bin Bayah. Like B I N and then B A Y Y A H. He was talking so, uh, one time. Someone a caller calls him and asks him. He says, uh, "I live in Belgium." This is like uh, some Saudi guy that's living uh, as an expat in, in Belgium. He says, "I'm living in Belgium, and my wife wants to take off the niqab." Right? Like he's all upset. He's like, my wife wants to stop wearing niqab because for them, for them, they, yeah. they have to wear it. Right? They're like yeah. really, really strict hanbalis, and the hanbalis mm -hmm. is like Imam Ahmed said that the niqab is like not only is it uh, mustahab, but it's almost like wajib. Mm -hmm. which means it's like highly recommended. Uh, and so they, they believe in, in wearing the niqab, which is like the face veil. Yeah. Uh, and so he was like, you live where? He said, in Belgium. And he's like, and what's the issue? And he said, my wife wants to take off the niqab. And he goes, subhanAllah. He goes, my brother, you have all these positions in Islam, some of which are more difficult to practice and some are easy. And you live in the West and you're asking us about your wife not wearing the niqab, which is one of the more strict positions. And he said, don't you understand? You're going against the Sharia. It's like, whoa, how is he going against the Sharia, Sheikh? And this is, this is exactly what he says. He says, because the principle of Sharia is not to follow arbitrary rules and judgments. You don't just go and take the, the, the Quran and the rules and you go, okay, this, it says this, do this, do this, do that. It's, it's, there's a goal implied. And this is one of the fiqhi principles from uh, Sheikh Mintami, I believe, which is what he mentioned. Is that the min maqasid al sharia from the goals of the sharia, tahsil al manafa wa takmiliha, wa ta'atil al mafasid wa taqliliha. That one of the goals of the sharia is to increase of that which benefits you and complete it, and to limit that which harms you and decrease it. And he said, my brother, by wearing, by expecting your wife to wearing this niqab in a Western land like Belgium, he said, you're increasing the people's hate for Islam. And in that situation that you're in, it may cause them 
to pass legislation against Muslim against Muslims and increase the harm against the community. So you're not doing something good. Now like we're just is, talking about the the niqab, the, just the face veil. We're not talking about the whole headpiece, the yeah, yeah, covering yeah. and everything. Just yeah, no, just no, no, the face veil. Yeah, yeah, because the, the the hijab is not something that someone said is, is you don't have to wear. It, you know what I mean? Exactly. But they're um, treating it like it's the whole hijab. Yeah, and so and so he's saying like you have Islam is like it's like a spectrum. You know what I mean? Of valid opinions. Some of it is closer, more liberal, and some of it is more conservative. But all of it is valid. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. that's the spectrum. This guy is picking the one all the way to the right making it so difficult when he could be picking the one that's a little bit more on the left and both of them would be accepted. And what he's saying is that you're not helping the Muslim community. And especially in the West, he said the, the, the Americans or the Muslims living in the West need to be way more on the left. They need to be picking the positions that are easier for them. He even goes as far as to say, and this is something that's real controversial for sure, uh, that Muslim women in the West should be allowed to, to marry without a wali. You know how like the conditions of marriage are like three things. You need two witnesses, you need mm-hmm. the dowry, and then you need uh, a male uh, relative to, you know, do the marriage procession for her on her yeah, behalf. Right. Like her father, her father's not around her brother, if not her brother, her uncle, something like that. So there's a mm-hmm. hierarchy. And he says that there's a position within the Hanafi school that states that it is allowed for a woman to marry without a wali. And Muslims in the West should take that position. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so and so people that make it so difficult, that make it so so strict, and they, they, they pick these rules that are the most strict in Islam, thinking that by doing this, I'm doing more hasanat when it's not the case. You know, it's, there is a reason why we don't have a papacy. There's a reason why we don't have an Islamic hierarchy, why we don't have a pope. It's, it's for this, it's a rahmah, it's a mercy. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or the Prophet Sallallahu said that when... when uh, Salaman uh, al-Farisi, when he came to ask the Prophet uh, about a question about whether it's halal to eat butter from a certain animal because he heard it was haram for the Jews and he was wondering if the Muslims are going to pro- apply that rule because he was a new convert at the time. Uh, he said that anything that, sh- that Shiriah does not comment on is halal for you. Right? So he was saying to him that this is a mercy from Allah. Allah did not forget. It's a mercy to you that he did not call upon that. And so uh, when the ulama go and they figure stuff out, Right, and they they think and they talk together like is this halal, is this haram, and they have differing opinions. It's okay to pick an opinion that's differed upon 